Afternoon, everybody. My watch says it's half past four, so we'll make a start. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning Committee. Um, I have apologies from Councillor Looker and Councillor Flinders is here. I have apologies from Councillor Eyre and Councillor Fenton is here. Council, both Councillor Cuthbertson and Culwick are on their way, but they're in traffic and then perhaps they'll find, get to the car park and find there's no parking space. Anyway, they are coming. Um, can I ask members and members of the public to turn their phones either off or to silent, please? Um, if the fire alarm, we're not expecting a fire alarm, so if it does go off, we need to, we'll need to vacate the building by going um, down the stairs and out and outside and round. I'm not quite sure where. Somebody will tell us, but we have to leave the building. Um, and uh, if anybody um, needs to lose, they're out the door and across the other side of the, of the stairs. Um, I remind people that this meeting is being webcast and um, uh, the, um, but only the people that are actually speaking will, are, are shown on the webcast. So, um, do I have any declarations of interest members that haven't already been included in the register? Yes, Councillor Flinders. Thank you, Chair. I wish to declare a personal interest in relation to agenda item 4A, land to the south of Field Lane, Hedlington, due to being a donor and an alumnus of the University of York. I have consulted with the Council Senior Solicitor, who has confirmed this is non traditional so we'll take part in the debate and vote. Thank you. Councillor uh, Taylor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Similar to Councillor Flinders, I'm an alumnus of the University of York and I was a sabbatical officer on the Student Union there for two years, up to 2014. So I think it's a personal interest. Yeah. Cheers. That's fine. Nobody else, right? Thank you very much. Um, do I have your approval to sign the minutes um, of the meeting held on the 15th of November? Thank you. Very much. Um, we've nobody registered under general public participation, so we move on to the plans list. I'll take them in the order that is, is listed, which is uh, 4A, um, the university application, 4B, York Dance Works at Leven Regina Street, and 4C, Plainfield Lane, Wiggington. Um, so, 4A, which is land to the south of Field Lane, Heslington, and starts on page 21. We have an officer update. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just have a brief overview of the application um, and the update will be at the end. Um, so this is Reserve Matters application for approval of site and design, external appearance and landscaping to provide student accommodation for the University of York on their East Campus. The development takes the form of two colleges, North and South. We've got the North here, South down here. And then in central amenity space referred to as Gateway Green and then two amenity blocks two more residential blocks here. A total of 1,480 bed spaces will be provided. Outline consent for the development of the site as a campus for the university was allowed following a public inquiry in 2007. Both North and South Colleges will be accessed via, via a central hub, one here and one here. Uh, North College will provide 10 blocks of accommodation, providing 870 bed spaces and situated south of the detention basin which is up here. South College will provide 490 bed spaces arranged in eight blocks of accommodation having been reduced from 10 and the position of some of the blocks to lake have increased along here. Gateway Green, Gateway Green will take the form of an informal landscape area providing space for a fence. Two accommodation blocks will be positioned to the eastern edge along there. The proposals also involve the realignment of Lakeside Way to a more northerly position um, which is this one here. So currently it comes down around here. And a section of Goodwick Way, which follows along here and comes down here, will be removed. Um, as an update, an objection has been received since the report published. Additionally, a construction environmental management plan has been submitted by the applicants and considered acceptable by officers in respect to construction impacts upon biodiversity. Conditions 1 and 2 have therefore been updated. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, any questions for officers at this time? Yes, Councillor Waters. 
Have we still got the retained objection on paragraph 3.4 from uh, design and sustainability? Does the objection from design and sustainability facilities still stand? <laughs> Sorry. Um, it does, but it's also having a balanced view on the proposals. So we have, um, with Guy, um, we have taken measures to negotiate with the applicant um, and to, to address those issues. Um, but he does um, object to certain aspects of the proposals. So just to follow up with that then, what sort of area is going to be, are the public going to be excluded from? Um, square yards or a percentage of the open space on the campus. The reason I'm asking is it was only a few short months ago that we were sat here being encouraged to allow development on Windmill Lane playing fields. And the pretext of that, or a large pretext of that, was there was so much open public space on the university. And I did say at the time that it was private land and that access could have been closed off at any point. So that's why I'm so interested with this point. In terms of the public accessibility, there is a balance in this application in regards to the biodiversity. So particularly the detention basin and the lake have increased um, over the 10 years that the university has been has developed the campus. That has increased a lot of uh, biodiversity and ecology. And currently people can access here and there will be some barriers along here um, and along here. Um, Mostly students will be able to access the lake from these boardwalks here, but that's about it. It's, it's a boardwalk. Um, and that's the reason for that. The university are proposing that welfare of the students, they come through a central hub and then they are retained in that so they can monitor who comes and goes, but also um, that there's a requirement for the biodiversity to, to maintain that level and to improve and enhance that level. Um, but as part of the outline application, the inspector did comment that it should be a public, publicly accessible campus, but all the rest of the campus, the pathways, the gateway green, they will all be publicly accessible. So it's... it's is all the land that is publicly accessible now going to be publicly accessible in the future? Because I seem to recall further in this agenda, there's comments from the police. No. So the areas that will be that will still be publicly accessible will be the um, Lakeside Way along here, this central green area, and the pathway at the top. There is some uh, discrete boundary treatments to enclose the, the actual colleges themselves around the lake. But there's a balance to allowing public to access the site is that it can impact on the biodiversity there, which has increased. And we have then taken measures in this application to ensure that that's maintained by, you know, not allowing students there, but also not, it then results in not allowing the public there as well. It's, it's a balance we've, we've had to, um, to weigh up. Yeah, Councillor Shepherd. Um, can I just ask you for further clarification on 1.7? So, um, as part of the um, proposals and for the development plan that is emerging, um, we, as a council, would want to see um, before the the university and the campus expands any further is that accommodation is provided on campus as a first protocol. So the application is for is to provide student accommodation for first year students and foundation year students and overseas students to be able to guarantee accommodation on site. So, and then any over overspill of that will be given to any of the returning students. Hmm. So um, do they just disappear after the first year? Yeah. <laughs> want to? You might want to ask the the applicant the 
yep. uh, about that because it's obviously the university's policies rather than what's going to go in. Yep. Is that okay? Yeah. I just found it yeah. a, a rather vague as yeah. to where they would go afterwards. Um, would we have someone that can comment on the oak trees? Sorry? The two oak trees. Uh, 3.18. Yeah, the two oak trees will be lost as part of the proposals. Um, we would try and um, retain them. Unfortunately, the layout um, and there are restrictions, um, particularly, I think it's one along here. Um, so with all the development around it, then they would probably be quite um, impacted upon. Um, but as in detailed in the report, um, there will be a substantial landscaping plan that would um, overcome the, the loss of those and they have um, advised that they will be um, you know once they be moved they will be on site uh, to allow that biodiversity to increase as well. Are they TPO'd? They're not, no. Right, okay. Um, Chair, will we be being able to speak to a highways officer? Um, with difficulty because despite the planning officer's best efforts. We don't have one here. You could try try asking the question and see if somebody here can answer. Right. Um, right. 3.20. Um, Alison's just, do, you, do I hang on? Alison's just gone to see if she can find somebody. Oh, right. So okay. if you want to hold Thank fire you. and we'll move on to somebody else. Councillor Richardson, did you have a? Uh, it, it was on 3.18. Uh, it says, as with species rich grassland south of Lakeside Way, these will be lost. We've already heard about this, uh, what may be and may not be about the habitat. How is that being addressed? The fact that it is a species rich grassland, where is that being offset? Is it, or is it being reduced? Or? So along the, um, along the Lakeside Edge, there's a lot of grassland there. And the nearest building to the lake is this, a distance of 18 metres away. So this grassland, so it's envisioned that this grassland would be retained and enhanced, um, which is already there. So you're saying that will imitate what this is saying, the openness, because it, I mean it's fields and, and it's, yeah. it is building, does it then go into fields where there's already rich biodiversity and the hedges and everything else, which is what we're talking about. The oak trees that are part of the, the original hedge lines, they seem to be disappearing. It, it's just a, right, well, that's good, but there doesn't seem to be any evidence in here to say, as with the officer's concern, how you're going to mitigate these points. I mean, if you said, well, we're going to create a large piece of open field somewhere nearby uh, to compensate, or you're going to put it somewhere else, it just seems to be, well, we're going to put a strip, it's going to have some trees, and that may do it, which isn't actually going to do it because we've got no evidence. No, I see, you, I see exactly what you're saying in terms of your points. We've, we've looked at the proposal as a whole. We've also, through the process, negotiated the buildings have actually moved away from the... Um, I'm trying to do this backwards. From down here. Previously, the buildings were all the way up to the lake down here, whereas we've actually asked them to move them further away. So through that, again, we've ensured that more of this is retained. But yes, there will be a loss by the nature of building on there. But we, we've got to a point where we think it's acceptable and as much of it will be retained as possible. And it's for us to make the planning balance that we're then recommending to you as acknowledging, yes, there will be some form of loss, but the provision that we're providing, the mitigation measures and on balance, we think that that's acceptable. But given, <clears throat> given that there are, the presentation we had some time ago, that it is going to uh, expand and expand. We're going to have thousands of students on the campus. They're going to be in this area. We can't stop them. So that diversity will not work. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a point of saying an area nearby where, the, where there's water or something, to actually take that over, you 
can ask people to say, or people volunteer to set up nature reserves to offset, and that is protected, and that's made clear. But there's no protection on these, so anything could happen to it, and we, we lose the whole lot. It's a university. It's worth, just worth pointing out that the students yeah, won't be able to access yeah. that it's section there. Things. That will be... It was. Lin, the, well, Lindsay yeah. just pointed yeah. out here, there is a boundary treatment to the back of the student accommodation there. So it won't be that the students will be coming into that area in terms of biodiversity. Yeah. So That's my the, understanding. You might be better, direct, better directing right. that to the agent in yeah. terms of the, the application. The access for students to the lake edge is through this boardwalk, which is on both... Um, colleges and that's it. There's going to be discrete planting all the way around here which would restrict access for students to the lakeside edge to, to increase that biodiversity. Okay, thank you. Councillor De Gaulle, to follow up on this point, can you just clarify that the, the area within the site boundary there that's shown as green to the sort of west, western edge, is that conditioned to be maintained as species rich grassland or is that going to be amenity space for students to sit around on and you know um, use as, as amenity space for students I think is it this area showing yeah yes yes, yes that, that will be maintained so there's this discrete boundary no, I, I, here which will yeah, I'm not asking whether it's going to be maintained I'm asking whether it's going to be maintained for biodiversity or as, yeah. you know, mown every couple of weeks, open grass for, for the students to sit in. I envisage that that will be um, maintained for species-rich grassland as what is currently there at the moment. So is, is there going to be any conditions to do to that effect if it's, we... if it's this, to compensation for the loss of... Landscape and hardest stuff um, For biodiversity. We've, we've got um, a condition, which is number four, um, for the landscaping scheme, and it also includes hard landscaping, um, and it does include um, ecological <coughs> impacts and hab habitat impacts on the lakeside, and all of that will be encompassed in that condition. So the whole landscaping for each will be looked at. Okay, right. Okay, thank you very much. We'll hold on, hold fire for the for those questions if we can find somebody for, from um, uh, from highways. If not, we'll we'll deal with them after the public speakers. Um, we've got two, three, four, five public speakers. I forgot to say how this works for those who haven't been before. Um, each speaker will um, we get, get three minutes to address the committee. I'll give them a 30-second warning, um, and it may or may not be that there's questions to you after you've spoken. Um, so, but then after the public speakers, we go back in, into debate. Um, so the first speaker I have is Alan Richards, who's here on behalf of Badger Hill residents, speaking in objection. Am I on? Yes, you are. Great, thank you. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, Badger Hill is a small 1960s estate um, stuck between Campus East and the Hull Road. And it's been, it's been affected a lot over the years as a result of university expansion. The explosion of HMOs, um, no family houses on the estate now really to speak of, um, overflowing rubbish bins. It's um, going to be a bit of a ghost town tonight with it being near Christmas. At the moment parking is our number one issue and things have definitely got worse the last couple of years. It's obvious to residents that more and more cars are being parked on narrow roads and scruffy grass verges. A number are abandoned for weeks, literally weeks, on junctions causing obstructions and blind turnings. Many of the people illegally or badly parked we know are students or tutors. We asked them. One tutor was parked right on a rogue junction for five weeks last year. Every car had to manoeuvre around onto the wrong side of the road. I've got photos um, near that rogue junction, the hardest junction, of eight cars in a line parked 
some of them illegally between two junctions. You can't see to the next junction, you can't see coming, cars coming from 100 yards away. To be honest, in term time, you can't confidently cross that road anymore, it's farcical. Traffic surveys done claim no problem, but they avoid key facts. Nobody has listened to our group when we point this out. And we're now making our own regular assessments of parking numbers and will continue to do so and advertise the real issues. Um, I'm not particularly optimistic about 2019 and when it is that you add 1,400 more undergraduates on Campus East and have star, staff coming in as well with extra cars. What facilities are there for parking nearby? None that are affordable, students and staff, staff tell me. Our estate will get a lot of those cars. I believe one of the standard lines of advice has been, in fact, to park in the neighbourhood. Sorry, this is not treating us with any respect. It's not considering our quality of life and our safety, and you need to do better. We need the council and the university to work with us and for us to make the estate safe by the end of 2019. 30 seconds. This is not a big ask of you. Please consider yellow lines or a sponsored residence scheme or whatever makes sense. Interim, the residence group is going to report illegally parked cars to the traffic hotline and do what we can to get them move. And we're also going to glean advice from other sources about what action can be taken. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Councillor Waters, then Councillor Carr. I'd just like to thank you, Mr Richards, for uh, mentioning all this. Um, we, see, <coughs> we see a slight um, advance of this problem into Osborwick as well, but obviously not as bad as Badger Hill. There's one thing that does surprise me that you didn't mention, though, and that's the one area of land that's remarkably free of parked cars, and they are the university car parks that are provided. Um, I don't know whether you've any, anything to say on that. Well, I walk my dog round the university quite a lot, but I'm not really qualified to say what um, state the uh, car parks are in. I don't actually come across that many of them. I don't know. I'm just going to say that they're usually remarkably um, empty, put it that way. Well, as I say, um, as I've said, every um, kind of student or member of staff I've spoken to says they are over a period of time, you know, expensive. It might not be for one day or for going in, but um, I can only say what, what they, the experts, have said to me and presume, it's, um, presume they're not lying to me. And obviously the parking on Badger Hill is free. Um, yes, yeah, so Councillor Carr. Thank you, uh... Thank you, Chair. I just want to ask Mr Richards, um, what sort of formal arrangements are there for, to, which govern the liaison between residents around the university and the university uh, itself, the university governors, shall we what say? What sort of liaison? What sort of arrangements are there? What, what sort of formal arrangements are there to govern that relationship? Um, my understanding is that we've got two members of our residence group who've just gone back onto a group called the Good Neighbours group. We, we were dropped off that for some unknown reason about three years ago. I, I'd never heard of it until, until recently. So I, um, apart from that, nothing. May I go on, Chair? Uh, does it meet regularly? Is, it, is there a formal body? Is there a, a, this good a series of meetings? This Good Neighbours group, I think, means it meets two or three times a year. So would you say then the, the attitude of the university is rather uh, relaxed about its uh, place in the, in the community? Does it, take, does it take your concerns seriously? I as yet can't comment on that. We haven't had enough of those meetings for, for us to get a, a, good, a good feedback on that. Uh, Councillor Taylor. No, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I note your concerns on parking, and I, I just wondered if you might be able to clarify, and, and no worries if not, I'll ask the applicant if you can answer this question. But it, on, in paragraph uh, 4.32 of this report, 
I mean, it mentions it a couple of times in the paper, but it talks about how a resident parking zone has been introduced in the Badger Hill area. Now, That's one half of Badger Hill. So it, just one half of Badger Hill. OK. Um, all right. But there, there was some confusion as well as to whether that, whether the deal was about to expire or the conditions of it were to change. So that, that would be the sort of thing that would, in our opinion, need to be revisited. OK, mm. thank you. Councillor Richardson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Richards. Uh, regarding this, I hate to go back, but um, how long have you lived in, in that area? 30 years. Right, so, you so I'm a beginner there. in Badger Hill. So <laughs> can you give an opinion as to the increase in uh, parking? In that, is it, has it increased since the university has expanded? Or is there something else in the area that has created the uh, parking issue to become a problem? Um, I mean, my personal opinions are largely based on me walking a dog two or three times a day. Um, and I can say there are a lot more cars parked now. Cars are bigger, aren't they, than they were um, as well. We have two schools which have expanded substantially in our area over a number of years. My girls have been to both of them, so you know, I know what happens. Um, and they are both, parking at both of them is an issue. One of the main reasons, is the primary school, is that um, whereas all the kids used in my day used to come from the estate, there's hardly any anymore. Right. Uh, I, I believe, that, anecdotally I've heard, from people here, um, sorry, in, in, in the council, that they were looking at potentially closing it at one stage because you got four or five applicants a year from around the estate, and it's only because it's such a good school. Mm. Um, what happens now is everyone comes to school by car. A large number of um, stressed parents, shall we say, particularly at nine o'clock in the morning, pay no respect at all to. <laughs> the road markings, and that has caused near misses. I believe there have been accidents. The uh, rest of the day is not, not a particular issue. What I see is, um, well, I see four cars parked at the house next door to me regularly. Mm. It's been a student house for 10 years. Um, and it's not the first year it's been like that. And I, we see that at other houses, and people tell us. I talk to people as I'm walking my dog round, and they say, um, I can't get my car out of my drive a couple of times a week because it's blocked in by parked cars. I can't see to get out because, oh, OK, these cars are not parked illegally, they're not blocking me, but on such narrow little roads, and they are narrower than the average estate, and that is a big issue, a big part of the picture, um, I can't see to get out, you know, and this includes 80-year-old ladies, apparently. That's one story I've been told about Eastfield Crescent. Um, so, and I say, are these cars there all the year? Oh, no, no, they're not there in the summer. They're only there during term times. But the, the fact is, is the impact within the area is, is quite heavy with vehicles, parking... Yeah, and some of them are parked all week. That, that's what we also see. We see a car parked all week, and the surveys that the universities talk about base um, resident numbers um, on, on certain criteria and that includes whether something's parked there overnight and the not resident cars and we've said that several times and it's been ignored. Has so, the university through this, this uh, committee made it clear about who should contact for any of these issues if they are students from the... Um, uh, not that I'm aware of, I don't go to this Meeting, but generally, good there is meeting, no, but you just left to fend for yourselves. Um, we have a number to ring for um, noise and behaviour problems, which has always been very um, effective. But I don't know, nothing specifically to do right. with to be able to get vehicles and cars. students. I don't or whatever. know if people are ringing up about that. Thank I'm, you. I'm encouraging but, residents to ring about these problems. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Shepherd. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Richards, for coming to speak to us tonight. Um, at 5.5, in conclusion, it says uh, you've had time to look at this application, haven't you? You've, you've read the application. Um, I, I've read certain things. I don't know yeah. whether I've read, it, read it, everything. It states, I've read some of the things you can see on the planning yeah. website. It, it states um, it is considered that the proposed scheme would not have an adverse, uh, adverse impact. Would you agree with that statement? No, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't see how you can bring in 1,500 extra residents in this day and age without bringing in, I don't know, 100 cars? Thank you. 50? Um, and staff. The main thing that someone told me was, well, well there'll be extra staff, won't there? Mm. And they will have transport to work, and they'll want somewhere to go, and they won't want to be paying for parking. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, as you all know, York is a highly successful university. Continued success for the university will require ongoing development of this part of the campus and other bits with the right mix of academic, office, leisure and living space. Uh, currently, about 5,700 of our students live on campus. The balance of just over 12,000 live in the city or at home. This project's aim is to bring more of those people onto the campus. The scheme is very high quality. We've learnt from what we've done in the best of Campus East and from Campus West. The scheme is entirely, as the planning officer has pointed out, on land that's previously been consented by the Secretary of State following the public inquiry, where these issues were foreseen and thought through and considered. And the green buffer zone and the various travel and transport obligations were a result of that. The Council has also recently approved our updated design brief and master plan that establishes the principle of us doing the next phase of development on this part of the campus. We've been asked questions why we can't build at the other end of the campus. The reason for this is we want to make a place. We want to create the right gateway coming into Campus East from Campus West, and we want to close the gap between Campus West and Campus East, because it feels a very long way to walk from one mm -hmm. to the other, and that's feedback we've had from students. In terms of mitigation, the scheme is at least 250 metres away from the village, and it's not built within the buffer zone. We can take direct action against anybody who causes a nuisance on the campus, particularly in those buildings, because it's our land. This is not the same when students live in the city in private landlord accommodation. <coughs> to pick up the point from earlier about the Good Neighbours Group, which I chair, and we do take our responsibility very seriously with the local community, based on concerns that have been raised over a number of months, we have successfully launched a streetwise scheme, which has areas near the campus and off, cam off campus patrolled by marshals that seek to make places quieter and to help students on their way and to make it better for local, local residents. This has gone very well and we intend to carry this on throughout the year. In terms of ecology, we are very proud of the environmental quality and the biodiversity we've created on our campus. It has green flag status and my teams are very, very proud of the ecology and the biodiversity they've created. We do not intend to damage this. Whilst there'll be some short-term harm while we construct the scheme, we believe the biodiversity will be of a higher quality when the scheme is finished. We've also, as the planning officer has pointed out, moved the buildings back further from the lake edge to allow further biodiversity to flourish. In terms of transport and parking, the original outline consent does require us to do very stringent things. We're required to monitor traffic flows and have shown since the creation of Campus East that we've been more successful than expected in moving modal shift from car journeys to walking, buses and cycling. This is in part because we have very low cost parking charges. We also will have robust arrangements in place to make sure that construction traffic parks within the campus and not beyond it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I'm sure there are lots. Yes, Councillor Waters, Councillor Richardson, Councillor Boyce. In terms of the travel plan and the modal shift, would it be fair to say that that is at the expense of residential surrounding residential areas being turned into car parks, while students may well walk and cycle from those areas? And the second part of this question will be: Have you got any occupancy level figures for the? car parks on the university? Yeah, the, the, the university car parks, particularly the ones in the core of the campus, are generally full by 9.30 in the morning. The ones that are further away, we have some car parks on the periphery, over towards the sports centre on campus east, they're not always as full. 
but the core car parks are full most days, including term and non-term time. Have you any comment to make about the residential areas being used as car parks because they're full? Um, clearly, that, if, that's, if that's what's happening, and, and we're only just getting to know Mr Richards as he's come along to our group, um, we have a residence parking scheme in part in Badger Hill, and it, that became that we put, in, put that in place in response to concerns that were made at the time. We're happy to have those conversations and to work with residents and the council to see if things need to be done to improve matters. Um, but the travel surveys are done every year. The information is provided to the city council, and all of that's in line with the original outline consent that we were given. So, what is the result of the latest traffic survey then, <coughs> parking survey that was carried out, Traxis, only a few weeks ago? Uh, we haven't. I haven't looked at it yet. I don't know. Councillor Richardson. Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, the parking issue. You talk about having car parks that are full. Are they full from people who are first years, they're actually at the college, or are they vehicles that have come from around York because they're in accommodation outside of the university? The vast majority of car parking is taken up by staff. There are very few students that park their cars at the university. There are several hundred that have a permit, um, and that's generally for medical reasons or because they have the kind of course which takes them on a placement, so if they're a nurse that's partly in the university and then partly on work experience. Um, and the charge for a student is very, very small. It's about £35 a year. So I don't think that's a disincentive to people having a permit if they can justify why they need one. But if they can't get into the car park, well, it makes no difference, does it? Because if that, if it's that's like, the case. I'd love to do this. As, I mean, a, as the point that's been raised within this about your future intentions that these beds will be for the first years no, and then no. if there are any vacancy then they will be offered to the additional students which means those students are going to be out and about again. But you know, the point I'd make is that having 1,480 beds does not mean you get hundreds and hundreds of cars. There is no correlation between the two. Students generally do not have cars and, and we would be supporting people to move into these into these beds because they can walk and cycle around the campus. So yeah, I don't see a correlation between building more beds and necessarily getting more cars. How many students have cars presently attending the university? Well, we'll only know about the ones that have a permit because you don't have to declare if you have a car where you don't, you're saying that you're so not using it. You're making a statement, but actually you don't know because you don't know how many vehicles are out there for second years and third years. You've only given perm well, you give permits because of certain conditions. You've accepted that the majority of the parking is for staff. It's so where, how do they get there? Where's these plans that said, well, they're going to come on this, we provide buses so they can meet at certain points, whatever. We see students, and as has been said, there are students with vehicles mm -hmm. outside their properties. That's fact. They're being asked to report it, so you can't... Councillor Richardson, we can't talk about students who have, who are in, who are out in houses off the campus and no, have to have about cars. Vehicles, which is no, but no, but no, but, nearby, but, the, no, the but this, we're, we're talking about whether or not this is acceptable and whether or not this application will create more cars. I think that whoever happens to live currently in the in the community and happens to have a car, I don't. That doesn't come into this debate. Point is, if we know that second year are being asked to go into private accommodation nearby, whether, well, in York area, it could be anywhere. There's a question about why nobody knows how they actually travel there to say, well, actually most of them have a vehicle and therefore we're creating an issue because they will travel to the university and go, I can't park, which then they go, ah. I'll go pack over here. No, no, Councillor Richard, so we're, we're back, debating so about... Where is the, the evidence to say that there is no effect when you know that actually there are more vehicles out there? We're not debating where second-year students live and travel to. We're debating no, no. whether or not these more extra bed spaces are acceptable and whether or not they will provide extra parking, uh, extra vehicles. Um, if you but, feel you can answer any of that connected. question, then do. But I'm I not sure I can, Chair, to be fair. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Councillor Boyce. 
Thank you. Um, if this development didn't go ahead, where would the students live? Uh, that's a good question. Um, the students would live in the city, potentially, in either bespoke student accommodation that's built by the private sector or houses of multiple occupation, um, which has, in our view, a much more negative impact on local communities. So, as I said in my, in my presentation, the reason we want to do this is because we believe that bringing more of our students onto campus, that's a mixture of first years, postgraduates, and perhaps some more returners, is better for them from a student experience point of view, but it also allows us to manage them in a more consul consulted way. Okay. Councillor Carr. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to ask Mr. Torboys, how long has this Good Neighbours group been established? I've been with the university two years. I believe it's been going much longer than that. I took it over and, and began to chair it when I joined in November 16. There was another group which also used to meet that oversaw, between the university and the residents and the community, the development of Campus East. We put that group back together in the summer of this year, particularly to bring this um, scheme to their attention. We intend for that group to meet more often um, throughout the whole of this development and as we continue to develop the campus. So the Good Neighbours group is something that I think has been running quite a long time um, and we think we'll probably need to augment that with, a, with another group that rekindles the one we used to have that looks in particular at some of this development and some of its uh, resulting issues. Okay, thank you. Councillor de Gorn. Yes, um, just to clarify, you did say that uh, although this would be primarily for first years, there were whatever vacancies would be offered to second or other, other year students. So I'm just wanting to know if some of those uh, students require a car because they're, as you said, they're going on placement, mm -hmm. where would they? park that, would that be the provision be made for them within some of the camp at Heslington East car parking? Yes, I think that would be the way, the way forward. If, if there was sort of second or third year students that were going on placement and they had a car and needed a car, there's a certain number of disabled spaces that are provided within the scheme. Mm -hmm. If they need to park their car somewhere on campus, they'd have to park it in one of the other car parks. Right. And is the, we know that the outline application um, had a, a travel plan, which is what you're working to mm -hmm. in terms of monitoring displacement parking. And the, the residence parking scheme that's in place at the moment was funded by the university as a consequence of that displacement. Mm -hmm. Would you be um, looking to, if, if residents felt that this was a solution, would you be looking to extend that to other parts of the estate if it's been ev evidence that there was... Uh, increasing uh, issue with with um, university-related parking spreading further within the estate. Is that could I, could I answer that in two parts? I, th I think I think that's about a wider question about the effect of the university potentially on neighbouring streets. Mm -hmm. I think if that was shown to be a problem um, through dialogue with residents and with the city council, we'd be prepared to consider what mitigations need to be put in place. Okay, thank you. I, I couldn't give a firmer commitment now, no, I but, that. but I wouldn't want that to be tied to the conversation we're having today about whether the scheme should be consented, because I don't think the two things are necessarily um, aligned. Mm -hmm. Just one, <coughs> one last point on this, uh, travel aspects. Um, understandably, you, you obviously want to promote sustainable travel as far as possible. As you said, the, the, the students are going to be living here um, one would assume we'll need to travel to the other campus or into the city. Yeah. Um, now, to my knowledge, part of the original travel plan was never implemented. That is the uh, cycle route between here and, and the Heslington West campus. Is that something else that would be looked at to try and I think address that's that? I mean, obviously, if there's going to be over a thousand more students here yeah. um, who need to travel to either to the other campus or into the city but it's going to have an impact. Well, I think, I think there's a couple of issues I'd respond to on that. I think the first one is we have a bus that links the two campuses together. Um, it runs very frequently and it's very, very well used. We also, of course, have the 66 and its variations that run from the campus into the city and back. And again, it's very well used and comes out to this part of the campus. So 
a lot of people use the bus. Equally, a lot of people cycle, but there is a cycleway along the road next to Badger Hill. This road is, the current Lakeside Way is used by cyclists and would continue to be so once the scheme is com completed. Um, and I think the scheme you refer to that links in through Heslington, I think, was quite contentious. Mm -hmm. And whilst the university would be prepared to look at that, I'm not sure the residents were that keen. So I think that's where it hit a bit of a stalemate. Okay. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Chair. Um, firstly, just for absolute clarity, the Good Neighbours group, I'm assuming, is what used to be the Heslington East Community Forum. No. Is that, is that the previous group that this has been that's born the, out that's of? That's the other group I referred to. So we've, we've got the Good Neighbours group um, has met continuously over the last number of years. The Heslington East Forum stopped meeting when the vast majority of campus seats had been developed. What we're suggesting is that that group, which we met previously in the summer to discuss this, would meet more regularly to be able to deal with some of the issues that the previous group used to deal with. So we would see the two groups continuing to run into the future, um, with, where one's far more about general relationships with the community, which is a good neighbours group, and the other one is perhaps more focused on the impact of things like this. Cool, thank you. Um, and I, I guess this is for my colleagues' benefit, uh, again, for clarity. You're absolutely right, and from my end, it's noted that th there's efforts being made to accommodate more students on campus. Um, but, but I suppose it is relevant for us to think about the bigger picture, and if we're talking an extra 1,480 beds on campus, which is welcome, how does that compare to the overall plans to expand overall student numbers that's a really What's good question. What's the difference? In that, well, that's a really good question because with the current economic context we find ourselves in, with Brexit and the student re review, student fee review by Augur, um, and the USS pension and some other things, um, we're not quite, we're not sure what the future looks like to some extent. So um, we can't be absolutely sure how quickly we will um, grow in the future. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate the honesty. Um, I guess, as you, as you might figure, where I'm going with this is it would, it would undermine this, if you like, selling point for how housing students on campus if the overall increase in numbers is, is, is far greater than these extra beds that are coming down. Well, I don't think that would be the, will be the case. Um, but I also think that if that were the case, we'd be planning the next scheme Mm -hmm. to be delivered to take up that demand. And, I mean, colleagues might want to build on those questions, but very, very lastly, this guarantee to first years and accommodation, this guarantee definitely applies to on-campus accommodation, because previously we've had guarantees where the guarantee was, we will find you somewhere, but sometimes that has meant you have gone off campus. Yes. So is it definitely on it, it, campus it, now? It's been interpreted in, in a number of ways. Yeah. Well, I think this question is right. Is it, is it, is it? I, I, think, I think it's been interpreted in the past um, in a number of ways. And for example, we have a nominations agreement at Student Castle at the moment, where we have about 300 students that live there. And we try to create the right kind of community for them to feel that they're as if, it's as if they're on campus, but obviously they're, they're not. But going forward, we, we really mean we'd like to bring students on campus. Okay. Councillor Fenton. Thank you. Cheers, Chair. <clears throat> hey, following on from Councillor Taylor's question, just by way of context, so the 1,480 bed spaces, this does not equate to 1,480 additional students. We're looking at mm -hmm. providing on-site on -site accommodation for students who otherwise would live in the community. So it's not a case of university expanding by 1480, therefore we will need this accommodation for that expansion in numbers. So what I heard was, no, it's not, it, there's not that correlation. Is that, am I correct in, in that? Yes, I think that's fair. Just to reach the microphone. Your, mic, your mic's gone off. <laughs> I think we expect that some, uh, some of this will be filled by first years who may be new students we didn't have, or, or students that are new, new in number that we wouldn't have had before. Um, some could be returners, but
but equally some of this space will be filled up potentially by students who might currently live on Campus West where we need to do some refurbishment work. So there's a whole complicated picture to work out the supply and demand. Councillor Shepherd. Um, on uh, paragraph 4.31, um, it talks about the, um, uh, an agreed outline stage is a car free development. And then it goes on to say that the university encourages students not to access the campus in private vehicles in line with their travel plan. Can you give us an idea of what the travel plan says? Not personally, no. Miss Janet's got an answer. Okay. Can, I, can I phone a friend? <laughs> Clause is it, Councillor? What paragraph are we on? 4.31. 4.31. I think. I think what what I said earlier is the fact that we, we discourage students from bringing cars onto campus unless they have a medical or work-related reason. <clears throat> have you worked with students for a long time? Um, Probably about 10 years. Mm. So, can I ask you, um, did you say that a travel survey had been done recently? I think we just concluded one a week or two ago. Um, before that, when was the one before that? What, what year was that? It would have been six months ago. Mm. Yeah. It was actually two You'll need to come to the mic. Can you come here? You can come here. We do it every six months then. Yeah, sorry, for those who don't know, Janet O'Neill, who is the retained planning university consultant. planning consultant. Yeah. Um, so there's a number of surveys during the year. One is vehicles going through three specific junctions on the three main roads that lead to the campuses. The second survey is campus car parking. So how many spaces are there on each campus? The third survey is related to off-campus parking, in other words, on-street parking. These are done each year by a, um, a transport consultant. The results come to us, come to the university, and then we submit them each year to the um, case officer at the council. So they're, done, they're all done each year, but they're done at different times of year, depending on whether you want to do them during the time when the students are around. Is that it? Another one. Lovely, thank you. Right, I have just a question on car parking charges. You said that a student pays about £35 a year? Yes. What about a staff member? Um, a staff member pays 0.6% of their salary, right. up to a limit of £400, okay. which I think you'll agree is cheaper than many others would charge. And does that, those charges for either side allow them to park anywhere on the campus? It gives them a right to hunt for space. Anywhere? It anywhere always... on any of the car parks, yeah. Okay. Right, OK. And uh, there seems to have been on my, on my right-hand side some difference of opinion between whether or not the car parks are half empty or whether or not they're always full. Uh, Certainly from my point of view, if, if I were to try to move my car from one part of the campus to the other after about 9.30, I would find it very difficult right, to park. OK, fine. So generally they're, they're well used? Uh, in my, yes, in my opinion, yes. OK, lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, that's fine, thank you very much. There's nobody else indicating, so you might want to make your getaway. Um, the next speaker I have is Julie White, who's the agent for the applicant. Okay, I'll give you a 30 second warning. Chair, the proposals represent cluster four of the phased delivery of Campus East granted outline commission in 2007. 
The application site is wholly within the area allocated for development by the outline permission and student residences are an acceptable and approved use within the campus as part of that outline consent. The earlier phases have concentrated development towards the centre and eastern side of the campus, but this has resulted in students feeling too far from the facilities at Campus West. The recently approved master plan for Cluster 4 identifies development to the west, of end, at west end of Campus East as an opportunity to improve the connectivity between the two campuses while creating a new gateway to Campus East. As you'll have appreciated from your site visit, Campus East currently lacks a sense of arrival, which the proposals have sought to address. The new Gateway Green is designed to provide an informal parkland landscape flanked by the new college buildings, resulting in an attractive and arrival space for Campus East when approached from the west. To respond to the transition in the landscape from south to north, the height of the college building steps up from three to four storeys. The colleges will be constructed from a mix of brick and concrete panels to reflect materials already found on both Campus West and East, and they've been designed to achieve a BRIAM Very Good rating as a minimum, with hot water and heating provided by the University District Heating System. In response to consultation feedback, the original proposals for South College were reduced in density and moved further from the lake, as you've heard, to lessen the ecological impact of the development. Increasing the distance between the buildings and Lake Hedge has provided space for over 5,000 square metres of new planting appropriate to the waterside location to increase the biodiversity of the site. This will extend the breeding and foraging habits along the northern edge of the lake to the benefits of birds like the potard. To North College, there are similarly extensive biodiversity enhancements proposed, including oak woodland planting to replace the two oak trees lost across nearly 3,500 square metres of land. The enhancement of land elsewhere within the wider campus is also proposed to create new breeding and foraging habitats for the Skylark. Further details of these measures will be secured by Condition 4. A construction management plan has also been provided which sets out how biodiversity on the site seconds. will be protected during the construction phase. And we are pleased to note that the amendments have resulted in the council ecologists supporting the proposals and the withdrawal of the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust's objection. Development of new student housing on campus is supported by Emerging Policy ED1, and we hope, therefore, you can support your officer's recommendation to approve the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Are there any questions not relating to car parking? Because this is the developer who actually... So we're looking at the building rather than the associated issues. So are there any questions? No. Yes, Councillor Richardson. Yeah. What, I mean, can you not save these mature oak trees that you wish to? They're not the specimen trees you might be imagining. Um, the development requires some alterations to the levels within the site. It would result in uh, the land being lifted around the tree to the entrance to the site, to the edge of Gateway Green. Um, which would prevent that tree from being retained. It would just, it wouldn't be um, viable for that tree to be retained in that location with the land raised around it. Um, the tree, the other tree is located on the edge of North College. So again, um, it, it would affect the position of those buildings. And as I said, they're not specimen trees. They're not a beautiful, huge oak tree. Um, so the compromise is that the significant Oakland woodland planting between the edge of North College and the detention basin um, and the two trunks that would be removed would be placed within that area to maintain the habitat value associated with those trunks. When you say that they wouldn't, well, the first one would not be acceptable, in what means? You mean aesthetically? It wouldn't, no, I said the land would be raised around it. That would uh, impact on the health of the tree. The, the levels across the site will be adjusted for the development, um, and it would make that tree difficult. There are many places that have sunken areas. In other words, banking, so you have levels. So when you say the levels are going to be higher, it doesn't actually mean to say it's going to be around the tree. There are many ways of holding it back, so the tree is the centre point of. That's all down to... It's also at the, sorry to interrupt, the, the tree is also at the pinch point to that entrance to the site where Gateway Green is. So 
um, in addition to the land being raised around the tree, it would um, affect the entrance to the, the site. So it was intentional to design it that way, no consideration about the trees? Uh, well, the trees, um, the access road needs to be realigned um, from its current position um, because it's failing, the quality of the road, the construction of the road is failing. The realigned road position um, affects the, the tree in question as well. And how confident are you in being able to replicate the biodiversity, the livestock, etc., as it is now, after the development has been uh, achieved, given that there are sections where there appears to be a little piece where you can walk across to look at the water. The students being students will go wherever, and it's a case of if they go on the bits of the side, by the time somebody comes around the corner, unless they've got security all over the place, they're there, they've damaged it. So it's, should it not be in a different place where it isn't at risk from? Hence, that's why I was saying about a different area away from the campus <coughs> to balance out the loss, which is then protected, it's safe, it could be deemed as an area for trust, somebody, somebody to take it over or whatever. But the risks, do you not think the risks, given that people like water, they are there, they're very close to it? Um, we're very confident that the biodiversity enhancements will replicate what might be lost. Um, the whole of the, uh, the site was formerly a cultural land with minimal to no uh, biodiversity value. Everything that's currently on site has been put there as a result of measures taken by the university. As you've heard from uh, Mr Tallboys, um, the university take those uh, responsibilities very seriously. They have a university-wide ecological master plan, um, which this proposal sits within. The application proposals themselves include significant landscape enhancements and biodiversity um, improvements, as I've outlined. Um, so we are confident that whatever is, is lost can be replaced uh, throughout the development and the wider campus. I, I just have to bring back the, the point about the area. Yes, it is open agricultural land, but there is a, a was a historic lane there. Uh, that was used for many years by travellers and, and various things. The hedge is very ancient. Those fields have been ploughed and planted for many, many, many years. It has a diversity that is uh, unique to where it is. It also encourages the kestrels around there. I, I think, can't see the kestrels being used. I think, I think you've overdone this. And she's given a very long answer. And I was just actually thinking the very same thing, that before the university was there, there was no water, so there was, there was, there was nothing related to that. So a lot of the biodiversity has come about because, as you say, of, the, of, of what's gone on there. So thank you very much. I think we've got to the end of questions there. So we move on to Councillor Aspen, who's one of the ward councillors, or the ward councillor for his match. Three minutes as well. And Thank I'll you. give you a 30 second warning. Uh, Chair, as, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm here speaking as the, the City Councillor for Heslington uh, vi Village. And I should also say that Heslington Parish Council has asked me to, to speak on their uh, behalf today. Um, Heslington Parish Council has now responded to the, the application, and I understand that's been included in the, the republished uh, papers. Um, but I just wanted to, to add a little bit to the objection from, from Heslington Parish Council. Uh, primarily, their objection is to the siting of the accommodation, um, which involves building the new undergraduate student uh, accommodation at the nearest point to the existing residents of Heslington Village, uh, only some 150 uh, metres away, uh, when they have concerns, for example, over noise nuisance. And I, 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 I get a, a sense of disappointment that the uh, campus uh, accommodation isn't closer to the new facilities, for example, the new medical facilities, as opposed to uh, putting it uh, right up against um, the, the, the village. Um, Heslington residents feel this will add to uh, a loss to their right of enjoyment to their property uh, and also loss of amenity due to uh, additional uh, noise by day and night, litter and, and minor uh, vandalism. 
Um, the key point I think the, 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 the ward councillor for the area later will be suggesting is that you might want to consider deferring the application in order to properly look at some of the conditions that might be necessary to mitigate uh, some of those concerns which we would have hoped would have been suggested uh, in, in, in front of you uh, today. If you uh, d don't consider that, which I support, I should say, if you don't uh, consider that, there are, for me, three areas of conditions or, or, or that the Hesington Parish Council would like you to look at. The first one is, is around mitigation of traffic congestion and parking nuisance. We don't believe it's been sufficiently addressed in the application. There are existing breaches of on-street parking consent, which is very problematic. Uh, and if this planning application is granted, we would like an additional uh, condition obliging the university to continue to uh, conduct annual traffic and parking surveys with appropriate action across all affected areas, but for that now to be continued for the duration of the outline planning consent, uh, and the Parish Council has suggested, therefore, until 2027. Um, secondly, um, there was reference to the Heslington East Community Forum. This may already be a condition, but if it isn't, uh, to, to ensure that that regularly continues for residents, contractors and the university throughout this two-year build period, but to actually condition that. And then thirdly, um, how the university will continue to mitigate the impact primarily of antisocial behaviour. There are schemes like Night Safe and Bus Wardens that do make a difference, but can anything be done through planning to insist that the university continues Trans not just to put resource on campus, but Three also minutes. off campus? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Councillor Aspen? Yes, uh, Councillor Shepherd, Councillor. Sorry, just yeah. um, Councillor Aspen, um, in respect of the issue on parking, would, do you think that it would have been um, a plus to have had the latest traffic surveys to look at? Absolutely, yes. I think that would be very helpful so that you could understand the pattern and the impact, because there undoubtedly is an impact locally. Yeah, thank you. Uh, two questions. Um, firstly, residents obviously were aware in the outline plan that this was going to be developed. Um, is this sort of uh, phase of it, uh, has that changed from what was in the original outline, or is was it just the cap fact that the because there's been this, this gap before it actually developed for, for residents are now concerned about something that was always going to happen anyhow. I can't answer as to what was in there. All I can say is there is a general consensus and disappointment locally that the undergraduate student accommodation and facilities such as the new medical centre and shops are not, are not grouped together as opposed to putting this, as they said, up to the closest point to Heslington uh, Village. Right, and, and the other point, just if you want, I don't know if you can comment at all about the point that I made that I'm aware, or maybe uh, you can confirm whether residents are concerned about um, general disruption from uh, student movements through, through Heslington as a result, and obviously this is going to increase that, isn't it, with more students either walking or cycling as well as using the bus services through through Heslington to get to Heslington West or vice versa uh, yeah, yes and and that broadly was the third the third point that I was trying trying to get out in the in the in the two minutes there, there is a lot of concern about uh, low level antisocial behavior primarily at the moment students walking to Halifax College in terms of the impact on on Heslington village but but elsewhere I think there is an acknowledgement that there are schemes that do occasionally make a difference but they want more of those schemes and a commitment to ensure that they continue throughout term time all year, every year, and don't dip um, in and out. And there's no doubt in my mind that this, if, if approved, would make those schemes even more important. I don't know whether you can do anything through planning about that. If you can condition it, please do. Uh, but, but if not, it's certainly something that I'm sure the university will, will, will hear and, and keep working on. Councillor Richardson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. 
Um, can you tell us how many complaints of parking, bad parking, uh, believed to be from students has the parish council and you, uh, as a city councillor, received I can't, over the past two or three years? I can't, I can't off the top of my head give you a specific number. What, what I can say is that there are a whole host of, of, of parking complaints from Fulford. You've obviously got the lines now extended all the way to Broadway and Fishergate due to impact there. Hesington Village obviously now is res parked, but there are all sorts of problems in the time limited bays in the res park zones with, uh, for example, university parking that was appearing along University Road towards Lawrence Street pre previously. So ongoing complaints, always, always a lot of complaints. Oh, it's so it's, it's, not an, a minor. it's an ongoing issue to right. manage. And secondly, what's the uh, what's your opinion about the biodiversity sections that have been put to one side? Do you not? Would you prefer a actual dedicated site that is set there to balance out away from the college so that it can be protected? Maybe parish council or members of the community could take it over. But a natural area, specifically, like we know, we can offset things. Um, so I'm not, obviously, not a technical expert to be no, able to give a professional representation, but I'm sure that Hesington Village would would prefer as much buffer as as possible. Bye. Thank you. The waters. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> In terms of the parking, and it's probably a question for your, well, our colleague there as well. Um, what's the simple answer to it? Because there is a simple answer. It depends, it depends on what position you're coming from. I can well, guess the, the, the where you might be coming from. The simple answer to me is to simply provide some more parking on the university and encourage the students to park on it. I, because we, we've seen, as we've been told today, that during the working week, the parking's <laughs> full. When I see these car parks on the weekend, they're empty, which implies to me it's largely full of the workforce. And the displaced student parking is still in the residential areas, certainly on the weekend as well. So if we're providing all these extra bed spaces here, I don't think miraculously the students turn up with no cars in the first year, and then in the second year, they've all learnt to drive. I think we're deluding ourselves as to where these cars actually go. I think you know in Eslington, Councillor Pavlovich knows in Unroad, and I know in Osborne where they end up. Yep. So there is a simple solution to this if the council was to grasp that nettle together with the university. I mean, I would, I would say that there are a variety of solutions to that. Yours is part of it. Right, and the second question is, um, I seem to recall you said it was about 150 yards from Eslington, the outermost edge of this development. I think the university representative, if I remember rightly, said 250 yards. Can we have some indication of the well, correct yeah. figure? Well, Hes Heslington Parish Council have put in their note that it's some 150 metres away uh, across a body of open water. Um, that was their submission. So if it's a body of open water, then there isn't much opportunity for landscaping in that buffer and, zone. And, to act. and they're concerned about uh, the no sound barrier. Yeah, and the light and such light, yeah. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Pavlovich. Thank you, Chair. This is a joint submission from myself and Councillor Neil Barnes. We do not oppose this development in principle, but are re requesting extra conditions to mitigate the impact of resident parking in the areas surrounding it. In 2006, this committee imposed a Section 106 condition requiring the university to undertake regular traffic surveys of the neighbourhood for a period of 15 years. This will therefore end in 2021. I have a document outlining the results of these surveys, but despite requesting an update, it ends in 2013. Nonetheless, this document shows that using the methodology outlined in your report at paragraph 3.2, that University of York related parking exceeds the thresholds in zones 1, 7, 8, 9, 
10, 11 and 12. Since that time, the university has expanded student and staff numbers, so it's reasonable to assume that the parking problem is at best the same. However, the parking restrictions in place in the Res Park scheme mentioned in your report covers only part of Zone 9, which is Badger Hill, and therein lies part of the problem. Whilst a few streets covered by the university-funded scheme helps those streets, the parking issues are displaced into the neighbouring neighboring streets and estates. Members of this committee need to know what the actual position is, and at present neither you nor we nor ward councillors do. This committee has acted in the past to mitigate the impact of university expansion, and I'm sure would do again if it was clear that there is both an existing problem and an, a potential future problem caused by granting this application. The impact of the existing scheme is that the streets in Badger Hill and Newland Park that do not have schemes will clearly suffer from parking by staff and non-resident students who leave their cars for the day and walk into the university to avoid paying at the pay and display car park. The university has a cap of 1,500 on-site parking spaces imposed when the staff and student numbers were markedly below their current levels. In 2013, they were operating at 91.2% capacity. Complaints about non-resident parking constitute a significant part of ward councillors' caseloads. The, impact, the effect of this has been recognised in recent planning refusals for HMOs due to the lack of off-street parking in a congested area within Badger Hill and Newland Park. 30 seconds. And these refusals have been supported when appeals have been dismissed. This, sh this shows that residents are concerned for valid reasons. I have discussed this with the council parking team, who also feel like developments like this do have an impact on neighbouring areas. I feel these views should have been reflected in the report. I would therefore ask for a further deferment of this application in order for members of this committee to see the updated detailed traffic survey results and modelled risk an analysis of the potential impact of an increase in both students and staff of this um, application in neighbouring areas. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Shepherd. Councillor Pavlovich, um, asking for a deferment, what would you like to see achieved with a deferment? <coughs> I think many of the questions that have been raised by committee today um, would be addressed by a detailed traffic survey results with the impact of um, university expansion. And we're not just talking about students, um, the, albeit 1,500 students. Um, I would dispute um, that it will have no impact on additional car parking. But we're also talking about two additional college box. So you're talking about additional staff parking there. You've already heard that the car parks are full. You add students, you add additional staff, the car parks are full. We've put a limit of 1,500 on car parking spaces. Um, where are they going to go? That's what we need to know. And if we know that, then we can put additional conditions in place. We don't know that because we haven't seen the survey results. I've got 2013. We've, we've asked um, and hadn't had access to the more updated <coughs> figures. And I'm grateful to Councillor Aspden for supplying these figures. Councillor Fenton. Thank you. I was <clears throat> just on, on the issue of a condition. What, given that there is a, a gap in knowledge and information, what do you think a condition might look like? What I, I'm concerned we don't defer and then dis, have a discussion and say we're no, we're no further forward in identifying yeah. what an appropriate condition might be. Um, but given what we do know, what, what do you think a, a, a robust and appropriate condition might be that we could either agree here or at a future meeting. As I pointed out in, 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 in my submission... Mic's off. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's all right. Um, as I pointed out in my submission, in those streets where Res Park exists, 
there isn't an additional parking problem. I would look at res parking the whole of Badger Hill and the whole of Newland Park. And I suspect Councillor Aspen would also ask for um, the bits of Heslington Village that aren't already res parked. Um, that would take away the problem. Well, once you, if, once, you move, once you move parking to so far out that it doesn't make it viable for you to walk in, because you, you're walking two miles or whatever to get into the university, then people will abide by the travel plan. Councillor Walters. Well, I was just going to bring up the simple solution again, in that um, if this traffic survey shows the current state of play is bad and the projected state of play is bad, what would you do rather than just simply rest park or double yellow lines, which is just chasing the problem away, mm. further away, because it will just displace it somewhere else? What level of parking would you suggest rather than the cap level on the university? to actually solve the problem rather than just move it? Well, I'd, I'd, for a start, I'd, I'd remove the cap um, and let the university build extra car parks if, if they're saying that they're already full and you can't get in past half past nine, um, mm. then they clearly, don't, they clearly have a capacity issue. Um, so one, one thing would be I'd increase parking. But to add... 1,480 extra students to say that's not going to have an impact on residential areas is just to me nonsensical. Even if you add 30 or 40 cars out of those 1,400, if they're parking on small, narrow residential streets, in my ward, that's an impact. Just as an additional question, it's probably not fair even asking you this, but you might know, what would the level of staffing be per, th say, 1,000 students? No idea. No idea, but no should, idea. Have, should have asked that earlier. But, you should have asked that earlier. But obviously, <laughs> there's going to be quite an impact staff-wise. But there's also going to be an increase in staffing. Um, we've, we, we've all attended the, as ward councillors, we've attended the presentations when the master plan for this was, was talked about um, and, and, and shown to residents, and it was part of the university's expansion plans. Okay, can we... Um... So you may, want to, you may want to ask the um, university back to, to respond to some of those points, if, if that's okay. possible. I think we need to push it on a bit. We have been doing this for an hour and a half now. Um, I still have Councillor Richardson. I hope, have you got a different question than the ones you've asked everybody else? Uh, I'm going to look at it. Uh, looking at this, this parking issue, do you think uh, actually having a car share policy would work, and that's not just for the students, but also for staff? Absolutely. To try and reduce the number of car parking spaces that are used at this present time, and that there is a policy that we could maybe put in to say there has to be X amount of car sharing. Car sharing, um, alternative modes of transport, all will play, um, all will play a part. Um, That's why there is a travel plan for the university that covers yeah, no, those issues. It, 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 I'm asking about the car sharing, which there doesn't seem to be. It yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm, a, sure, I'm sure that would make um, a, a, a positive impact. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Right. That's all the speakers. Um, before we go into debate, can I remind members that this, this, the university is governed by a very extensive outline permission that was granted on appeal and, and by the Secretary of State. So some of the things that have been mentioned today, um, we cannot influence. We can't suddenly decide to allow them um, three times as many car parks as they've got. Um, those kind of things um, are, are governed by the outline. So there are some things that um, I don't think that we can resolve necessarily. Um, and I also think that this application cannot be used to try and solve all the parking ills associated with the university, however far it goes. I have a question I'd like to ask to Councillor Taylor before we start. I don't know if you can answer this. 
but you, you, being as you're the one who's been at university most recently <laughs> around this table, uh, the implication from some members is that every, every student arrives at university with a car. Can you confirm that that probably is not the case? Uh, it, it's absolutely not the case. It's, it's definitely a minority of well, students who fine. do drive. Okay, thank car. you very much. I just thought members need to bear that in mind because they certainly are talking as if everybody has a, every student has a car. So moving to debate, I've got Councillor Shepherd, Councillor Carr, Councillor de Gorn on that side. Um, Chair, I'd like to ask for a deferment on this until we get some up-to-date information on the traffic surveys and to request a highways uh, officer to attend the next um, time that we look at this application. If the uh, committee is minded to approve this, um, I'd like to um, uh, look at um, a planning condition um, that's in the body of the survey um, that could be used as part of a, um, the basis for a, a planning condition on this application and also um, uh, in respect to the section 106 um, which is which was um, first created in 2006 and there'd be a, a section 106 for this application and I'd like to draw uh, members attention to paragraph 3 off-site parking measures <coughs> Um, so I, I'd like that Sorry, to which, is, which paragraph three on where? Um, on the, se uh, on the um, section 106. Right. It was section 106 for the original application. Yeah. And if you just bear with me a minute. So they could use that to look at to see uh, we've already got that as a basis. Yeah. As a basis both the condition and the section 106. We can't, we can't change the 106, it's a legal No, no, binding. I'm not asking to change one. I'm asking for a section 106. If the, if the committee is minded to approve it, yeah. a section 106 for this application, and... Um, no, we can't do that. Yeah, exactly. Can I just come in here, please? Sorry. Sorry, just to advise members, you've, there was already a legal agreement as part of the outline permission. I, I'm that sorry, I can't permission. hear you. Sorry. You can't ask for... Well, you can. The original outline permission had... A legal agreement with it and that's yes. the point where you need to secure it you can't then ask for another legal agreement for a reserve matters that was secured as part of the outline permission the outline permission was your permission in principle it looked at all these things your outline permission asked for your traffic surveys and everything extra that you're asking now has already been covered as part of the outline permission there's surveys that are required as part of the outline they're ongoing we know they're ongoing so reasonably can you ask for it from my point of view? Well, no, because it's already conditioned as part of the outline permission. And this is a reserved matters. So it's not, you c it's already been asked for as I part of the outline. I understand what you're saying, yes. Um, but I don't think that's been brought to the committee's attention. Um, I, don't, I don't think they've had a chance to, to look at the section 106 and to see the, the correlation between the two. So, so in respect of a deferment, they could be furnished with a, a copy of the section 106. Yeah. Just for my understanding, you want to see a copy of the section 106 for the original outline permission. If you were to defer it, you want that information put as part of your reserve, as part of the reserve matters pack of information. Is that what you're asking for? Because um, you can't. It covers the off-site parking measures. The, uh, yeah, but that's fine. That does yes. cover the off-site parking measures, but you can't amend it as part of the reserve matters. No, I understand you just that. Want that information. I understand that now. So I would go back to a deferment for for traffic surveys. But they've the up-to-date traffic service that we've not had chance to look at. But they're part of the outline permission and the conditions. Yes, they, they might be. I think but what they want is the results. To, Oh, so that we can, yes. we, and it, so out so of the results, we might be able to ask for something or encourage officers to do something. Yeah, okay. Yes, right. yeah. and okay. A, a highways officer to attend. And a highways yeah. officer to come. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Councillor Carr. Thank you, Chair. I think I might be making much the same point, but um, can I just say a few words? I would agree that to provide accommodation on campus, uh, I agree with Mr. Talboys, is on the whole a better alternative than accommodating students in a proliferation of HMOs, particularly in the Badger Hill and Hull Road areas of the city. 
As one time cabinet member for housing, I'm only too well aware of the difficulties which can arise when a substantial number of young people away from home for the first time or even the constraints of home impact on an established community. I'm encouraged by the commitment, Mr Talboys, to uh, beefing up the Good Neighbours Group, something which perhaps has not received the prior attention by the University uh, in the past. But I would like to see that commitment backed up by some form of conditional Section 106 agreement, and that's where I agree with Councillor Shepherd, to govern the management of the campus. That management obligation on the University should cover parking, noise, litter, waste and general student activity, as indicated in Para 3.22 in the Public Protection section of the report. These are overridingly important considerations which have a detrimental impact, which can have a detrimental impact on amenity and quality of life of adjoining residents, as we've heard from local councillors and the residents here tonight. I would support a deferment to explore a solution which offers a management regime obligation on the university. Thank you. Councillor de Gaulle. Yes. Um, I, I uh, think I agree with the, the point that there's insufficient uh, answer in here. We've heard the ward councillor say that there was, there was about half a dozen sectors which in the information that he had uh, that was available up to 2013 was uh, in breach of, of uh, exceeding the conditions set out in the Section 106 agreement about off-site parking. Now, it seems to me that if the ward council has been un unable to access information that's for, for that five-year period between 2013 and 2018, how are we supposed to make a decision on whether or not that Section 106 agreement is working? And now we have here a proposal for another 1,500 students plus the staff to support that, to service these facilities, we need to be able to see that that Section 106 agreement is actually having the desired impact at uh, mitigating off-site parking. And as has been said, there is a small area which has now got a residence parking. We need to understand whether or not this the increase of 1,500 uh, residents plus the uh, staff who are going to be servicing them um, will significantly impact <coughs> the off-site parking on the basis of looking at the pattern over the last five years, which has not been made available to us. So I'm asking for it to be deferred so that we can actually look at that and make a, a judgment as to whether or not it's reasonable for this committee to have additional conditions about off-site parking, which might be consequent of this development. Yep, OK. Just to remind you, though, again, though, that the cap is part of the outline. I'm not I talking mean, about the cap. No, no. Okay. No. I'll just, just well, maybe let's remind other members okay. that, you know, some of these are, out, you know, were put on, the conditions that were put on an outline were with the full knowledge of how many people there will event, would eventually be on campus. These aren't extra people on top of what was approved at the outline. Uh, Councillor Ward. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I'd like to support colleagues with the request for deferment. Um, as much as anyone, I'd like to see a higher percentage of uh, accommodation on site, but not at the expense of parking chaos in the surrounding areas. So I'd like to see the, the traffic surveys. I'd certainly like to see a highways officer here, which I thought was very remiss, bearing in mind that one of the issues that everybody wanted to raise the last time when it was deferred was the I'm highways. I'm sure making a complaint, I can show you, because the planning Thank officer you. tried her best. But what I don't want to see is when the survey comes back is that we all look at it and say, yes, it hasn't worked, and nobody addresses the simple solution. Because I appreciate what you've said about the very stringent uh, outline permission, but that was, in my opinion, largely um, blown out of the water in June 2015 when we... Um, approved the retail development and the surgery in the landscape buffer zone, which was equally stringently applied in the outline permission. So it's about time we actually said the parking isn't working, more than likely won't work, and more than likely if we don't increase some on-campus parking, it's going to be made considerably worse for the residents in Badger Hill, Ull Road and the top end of Oswaldwick. Thank you.
Mr. Fenton. Thank you, Chair. Um, if, if, we, if there is support for deferring the application, I, I'm still not clear, even with having had sight of the, um, the transport surveys, we'll have a better understanding of the nature of the problem, which I think from the speakers, um, they've, they've certainly brought it to life. But given that we're being told that things were agreed in 2007, which we cannot reopen, I'm not sure we will be really in in any better position than we are now to, to make a decision. I, 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 may, I may have mis, misunderstood or, or misinterpreted that, but it, we, we may be coming back to, to discuss the same issues and come to the conclusion that there's very little we can do about it because of conditions and Section 106 agreements that were agreed um, upwards of 10 years ago. Um, so I'm genuinely undecided because I'm not really sure what value it would bring. The Flint Microphone. Oh. Sorry. Couldn't um, the section 106 be varied? Perhaps I could answer that, Chair. Section 106 can be varied. It can be varied uh, provided uh, that all of the parties to the, um, to the original Sorry. agreement uh, agree to it. I can't hear you. Uh, Sorry, apologies. Um, a, a section 106 agreement can be varied, uh, but it can only be varied provided that each party to the agreement um, consents to variation. Moreover, yeah. any obligation comprised within a Section 106 agreement, as varied or as in the original, is constrained. It must relate to the principles of the development and the normal rules regarding planning obligations. So the straight answer is yes, it can be varied. Correct. Okay, I've uh, got Councillor Flinders. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to support the comments made by Councillor Fenton. Whilst I do understand the frustration... If one of the parties didn't agree, then it's a pretty victory. Well, I, this was the, there is an existing Section 106 agreement which the Council uh, was party to and is able to enforce, which was signed, I think, was it 2007? Uh, excuse, excuse me. Um, now, if, if the Council is seeking to um, impose a variation on that agreement, that relates to the original consent, so it's the existing consented scheme, albeit it's an outline form consent. So I would caution against using the reserve matters application as a means of revisiting the principle of the development which was established <coughs> and sanctioned following the process 10 years ago. Thank you. Just to advise members further, in terms of the traffic surveys that you're talking about, they are, <coughs> excuse me, they are covered under the outline permission, mm -hmm. and we will be getting them in the early new year in terms of what they're. So we know that they've happened, and we know that they're ongoing, and we know that if there are potential things that are happening and causing issues, that we work with the university to resolve those. So there are ways and means under the outline permission of us looking at existing permit parking and resolving the matters that are there through the outline and not through this. And I understand what you're saying about how you want to look at for the results of those coming forward, but we can do that as part of the outline permission as it stands and there are ways and means through those conditions that were set there that we can look and reassess if needs be, if anything needs doing in terms of the um, residence parking permit and other measures. So they were covered under the outline, but the outline gave permission for these amount of students, and more, I don't know exactly off the top of my head, students to be present at the site. So it was assessed as part of the outline permission how many students were going to be on site, and that was taken into account, hence the condition for the review of the parking permits. We, sorry, weekly, yearly, and that is happening, and we are aware of it, and we are working with it. And there are, there has been changes through that, in terms of the residents parking in the area. So yes, we're aware of it, and yes, we're doing it, but we're doing it as part of the outline rather than this permission. So it's not that things aren't being done; it's just that it's been done through a condition of the outline. I, I, I absolutely understand. <laughs> However, I do feel that there's a strong feeling within the committee 
that um, these surveys are not, and they're not working. But they have worked. But they have worked. Because no, they have provided. They, no, they are produced. Yeah, and they've, and they've had an effect. They've introduced WL Alliance, they've introduced some, some res park. It might be that the latest survey will say, yes, whole of, whole, the whole of Badger Hill needs to be covered by a res park. Well, then I think that it should come to committee but, on a de deferment so that we can. But it doesn't at the, need to. The whole that, we, that we look at the information and we also have a highways manager, um, officer, come to committee. Yeah. Anyway, there are some people. Yet. Yep. Thank you, Chair. Once again, uh, I wish to support the comments made by Councillor Fenton. Whilst I share members' frustration at the fact that we don't have a highways officer here, I don't believe that the information within the traffic surveys will provide us any, any information which would be relevant to deciding upon the reserve matter application in front of us. So I'd like to propose that we make the decision this evening. I'll take it to the vote in a minute. Councillor Funnell. I'm, I'm just interested that we keep talking about extra huge numbers of students. This is part of the normal students coming and, and lots and lots of students graduating. So if they're not in this accommodation, then they're out in the city. And so the problem will continue in this tiny city with too many vehicles, whether they're living on campus or not. So I, I really don't understand what this seems like a better way of resolving it than, than not having accommodation on the campus. Councillor Galvin. Chairman, I don't want to prolong this any longer. Um, I've sat in this committee now for a number of years and there's been a constant complaint that students' accommodation should be accommodated on the campus. We shouldn't have any HMOs we shouldn't have any stu student halls of residence, they should all be accommodated on the campus. And this at least is an attempt to accommodate 1,500, 1,400, or whatever, uh, to do just that. No additional students. I do understand the issue of car parking. I have a very good friend who lives on Badger Hill, and let me tell you, he bends my ear every time I see him. Uh, but unfortunately, Whatever we do, this is ultimately an insoluble problem because as Mark Waters says, Councillor Waters says, you'll just move it out. People buy cars and they're going to use them. And I do understand because I'm in a, I wouldn't say in a similar situation, but where I live, there used to be no cars parked on the road. Now of an evening it's chock full all the way because there's three and four car households. So in essence, the university is damned if they do and damned if they don't. There was the public inquiry in 2000 or whenever it was, 2007, that set out fairly stringent conditions. And I'm... 2006, all right, I'm 12 months out. I'm relatively uh, relaxed that we can't do much about those. We can't keep turning the clock back as much as I would love to. I'd turn it back something like two years, as some of you may well know. Um, and any traffic survey, I'm not sure what a traffic survey will achieve because one thing that traffic engineers don't have and never have had, they can have a few guesses, but they don't have a crystal ball. And so any traffic survey for the future, I would put to all members, really is, is, a, is a guess estimate. Quite frankly, in my book, it's a very simple issue. If you think there is a problem with car parking. If you think there is a problem because two oak trees are going to be cut down, and I happen to be one of these people that believes that big trees and houses don't go together, if you believe that biodiversity is going to be damaged, if you believe etc etc, then vote against it. If you don't believe that those are the serious issues, then vote for it. And I'm, I don't know if it's been moved and seconded to be deferred. I'm going to move, Chair, that the Ferrell on the table, we'll have to take have that we? first. Have we? Okay, fine. Yeah, uh, then I'm quite prepared, what, what, uh, depending on the outcome of that, to move the permission be granted. Can, Councillor, have you spoken on this? But, yeah, no, Councillor Taylor. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to sort of put on record, uh, because it's worth saying, um, and I, I think most members around here would, would agree that, you know, we, we support the growth and success of the university, but it's crucial that it's managed properly. And I largely buy into your approach. It just says, you know, we need to be a bit more simplistic about this and just see it for what it is. <coughs> but 
The fact that the, these last results weren't, well, it's been tw since 2013 since we've had information from these surveys. Since to yeah, okay. I have a crucial point done. to make. Yeah, okay, that's fine. For, and, you know, that, that might well be the case, but we've only got up to 2013. And since then, yeah. since, Sorry, since, yeah. since, <laughs> since then, a new college has opened in Constantine. They've opened the Piazza building on Heslington East. And there is the very much needed and much welcomed retail provision on the site, which that campus desperately needed. So there has been considerate change on that campus. And it would be interesting to see and useful to know what the situation is now following those three quite significant changes since 2013. I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah. 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 Sorry, members. Just, yeah. members, just to clarify, members, just to clarify, we have had surveys from them since 2013. It was we were asked for an example of a survey, and that was from 2013. We have been, there has been surveys. It was just the one that we were asked to give as an example was from 2013. We have had them since then, for clarification. Okay. okay. So, Waters, have you got a new point to make? Um, well, just in relation to what was said from the floor, and I fully agree with the planning consultant. We should be asking the officer, but because there's nobody here, I'm certainly not going to approve something when the current parking situation on Badger Hill clearly doesn't work and we've nobody to question about it. Right, OK. Um, well, from the chair, I'll, I... Um uh, it's quite right. We want we want as we want more people living on campus, students living on campus rather than off campus. That's a continual complaint around this room, has been for a number of years. Um, and as Councillor Gavin said, you know, when they do it, then we we still we still aren't happy. Um, I think we've uh, uh, Councillor Taylor did um, say that a minority of these first year students have cars, and I would say from my experience with the, I don't know many students now, but I, we do work with them and hardly any of them have cars in the first year. Um, so it's not as if we're gonna have 1,400 extra cars if this, um, if this development goes ahead. I think that members around, I'm afraid that members around the table are trying to solve the, the existing problems um, in the residential streets on the back of this application, um, which I don't think we should be doing. Um, the 106 and the um, outline did take into account the development of the whole of the campus, um, uh, including what is being proposed now. Um, the general siting of these blocks is generally where, the, where they were going to be sited on, on the outline. So um, I think the concerns perhaps of Heslington residents um, were probably taken into account at that, that time. Um, and, and the whole purpose of the of the traffic surveys and the fact that they have done on a regular basis and they have actually produced partial res park um, extra double area lines is that it gives a process for the university and our officers to follow and we would not expect this committee to be looking at the results of those all the time that is what officers are there to do um, to, to, um, to look at those uh, those results I think that um, if we do defer this um, I, I, I'm sure we will, I'm not quite sure what we'll do with the results of those surveys. Will we be saying to officers, well, it's awful, we're going to go away and, and, and introduce a res park zone. Well, if those, if those surveys show that that's what's needed, that's what officers will do. They won't need us to do it. So therefore, I, I, um, I, I think that on, on the basis of what's in front of us, we should be determining this today. Um, it is been, it's been moved by Councillor Shepherd and seconded by Councillor Carr. That, I'm happy to do so, that, Chair. Um, that this, this is deferred, so we'll take this first. Sorry, Councillor Richardson, have you got... Oh, yes, I, I just... Sorry, nobody else was indicating. I thought we oh, got to that. Was, I know I've said a lot today, but... Uh, I, the thing is, is, yes, the 106 is there. There's various things that have been agreed. But it's about making sure there is a commitment from both sides that both members of the public who are affected by whatever means have a voice within the system. At the same time, 
something that is affecting somewhere, as is this development, whatever you look at it, it is a development and will have an outcome. Therefore, there has to be some way of, of having the discussion with the locals. That's what I think we should be trying to get from this. That's the whole point. But you've got a situation where you go in res parks. Who pays for that? The residents do. And they'll say, but why should I be? Oh, they're doing it. Oh, well, that's all right then. But it's still a res park, and it's still a problem, and it's still the same, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, and, and of everything else. So again, it is, it's an effect. I'm not sure we've, we've heard a lot of evidence to say that there is a good commitment between the two to discuss. So either the parish council, they seem to be receiving a lot of complaints. And that is the point of this. Just a moment. I thought we were... Um, yeah. Um, well, thank you very much. But uh, I, if the chair had looked this way, I've had this before. Right. Councillor so, Doubted, oh, sorry. You put me off, and okay. I'll Councillor Doubted that. also indicated, sorry. Thank you, Chair. It's a very quick question, which may help me to decide which way to vote. Um, it's relation to parking. Yeah. And um, I appreciate what's been said about uh, not using the reserve matters to uh, deal with various issues. Um, is it still open for council discussion with uh, the applicants about um, looking at um, the, the cap for parking on site? Is this something that could still continue following the ordinary service that t take place? They could vary the condition that was part of the outline permission, but that's not what we're looking at now. If uh, there's a discussion that could take place, if you wanted it to happen, that we could go back to the applicants and it's, know the it, members it, it, have said that's part of the condition. I, 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 I'm sure that those kind of discussions could take place out with this, with, outside this yeah. application, if members felt strongly enough that that we wanted to look at the cap overall. But I think the problem with with, with doing that within this application is the cap applies to the whole the whole of the university it, it's far bigger than 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 this application yeah. but if there if there if 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 there was a will there if there was an appetite I mean, to ask officers it, to talk to the university well, it, about it that it seems that this is what the, the main I mean, issue that's yeah, but concerning I, I, everybody i i think Within this application, I think it, 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 that's that's far far too big because obviously we're dealing with the whole of both East and West campus. It would it would be with outside our remit. Yeah. I'm okay. sure from our point of view, well, we, we're more than willing to open discussions with the applicant and the agent, which I'm sure they'll be more than happy to do through the process outside of this application. We can, if members say that's something that they was concerned, we'd take it away and discuss that with them, but not as part of this application that's okay. sitting in front of you now. Well, I certainly very much support that discussion. Thank you. Okay. Right, so it's been moved and seconded that we defer on the grounds that members wish to see um, the results of the up-to-date traffic surveys to, um, and also want input from highways officers. Um, 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 more information, and that relating particularly to the 106. Sorry, you, your, your reason for deferral is to see the up-to-date traffic surveys and um, highways officers to attend, and also you were concerned about how the Section 106 was being interpreted, I suppose, for want of another word. More information on the Section 106 in relation to the traffic? Yes, Chair, the report Parking. refers to, in Item 4.32, to consider appropriate options if the survey results right. in figures okay. higher than 20% of previous. Yeah, so. okay, right. Fine. Okay, so all in favour of deferral show, please. One, two, three, four, five. Five? Yeah, all those against deferral, please show. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight against. So that won't be deferred today. I mean, I think we've been discussing the issues. I don't think we really need to, 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 to revisit. Um, I've just had a quick word with the officer about some of the requests for possible extra conditions and again we have the problem that some of the we you know we have the problem that that some of them are set down so my suggestion um, would be to add two informatives um, one was about 
um, ensuring that the that there are appropriate and meaningful discussions with residents through whatever they called the forum. I can't remember what it was, um, because I think, um, and also um, to request that they look, um, the university looks at introducing uh, the night safe or a similar scheme. Because um, the problem with putting it on as a condition is that the police are happy, <coughs> they're happy with the, um, with the actual, uh, the, 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 the building as it is, but obviously there is concerns about what happens to those students when they then they go out, and it's a similar problem that we have on licensing with pubs, you know, um, in a way. So that would be the, the, I, I would I would suggest that that might cover two of those two of those um, concerns, um, and also on the update we had there was um, a couple of variations on conditions, yeah. but no new ones. So, if any, yes, councillor. Page 50, landscaping condition. Shouldn't that be for lifetime at development if we're varying conditions rather than just five years? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. The, yes, the usual change to the landscaping to be the lifetime of the development. Right, so with, with, with the additional condition, the variations um, on the sheet, that variation and the two informatives um, are we ready to vote? Oh, pardon? Proposed it, seconded, seconded Councillor Flinders, right. All in favour um, of the recommendations, please show. Sorry, all, all, I've asked people to vote in favour of the recommendations, which is to approve with the very conditions on the sheet circulated, the two informatives that I proposed, and the change to the landscape condition. Okay, so stick your hands up again if you're in favour. <laughs> Thirteen. Yeah. Any against? Any abstentions? One. So that is approved. Thank you very much, members. Um, would we just like to take five minutes? Yeah, okay.
Sorry. Um, uh, in order for the minutes, um, Councillor Colwick came in and then went again because he declared an interest last month as because he has an interest in student accommodation. So, um, so he's, uh, but we've got another student accommodation one on now. So for the for the for consistency, um, he has he has declared that again and it will be minuted. But I'm not sure whether he's. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, just so you know why he came and went, um, and for the minutes has an, an interest. So we move on to page 57, 11 Readiness Street, erection of four to five storey student accommodation building. Um, do we have an officer update? Yes, there was an update circulated. It just uh, relates to the conditions and some amendments we've made. Um, I'll quickly run through those. Um, the approved plans list, uh, there was a correction uh, to one of the plan references there. We changed the construction management plan uh, just to make it slightly more precise. And, and there was a change to the condition on cycle parking um, just to make it more flexible. Uh, so we could agree any changes over time if we needed to. Uh, that's the extent of the updates. We've got the uh, scheme on the on the on the monitor there. Um, the coloured up area shows the the site plan. Um, the area just to the north is where we've approved a, a building of similar scale previously. Uh, it's waiting to be built. Um, there's an area of trees there that are, are not coloured in. Uh, that's that would be um, sort of interlinked uh, and related to the landscaping with the application site. The, ex the, the anticipation is that this becomes a, an extension of the uh, student block to the east. Um, the other thing that we picked up and mentioned on site, uh, just to, the, the car park within the building, uh, eight car parking spaces, that's for the uh, York Motor Factors, uh, the business that are on Redner Street. Okay. Any questions of officers? Oh yes, Councillor Waters. So that strip of trees that you've referred to, is it is it part of this application site or is it part of the other one or is it going to be the the, the non the non coloured one um, it re relates more to the uh, brickworks site on the opposite side that the red line is just covering the, the coloured up area on here. So there are there is landscaping and tree planting as part of this scheme but that, that those trees uh, to the north that are not coloured up are uh, associated with the uh, opposite site. The only reason I ask is again, condition 12 needs amending, most certainly with this one as well. But it won't relate to those trees, so hopefully, yeah, okay. Um, right, I have one speaker, um, Mr. Fudd, who's the agent for the applicant. Sorry to keep you waiting for so long. I hope you found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been an enjoyable evening so far. Um, I, I don't wish to extend your evening, with Julie. Um, <laughs> just to say, I, I think you know we've welcomed, we've had some good constructive engagement with officers, which has resulted in some amendments to the scheme. Um, we welcome, obviously, the lack of objection from any local residents or neighbours. Um, and the balanced findings of the report, and uh, as I don't really want to say anything more than that, Chair, um, other than I'm here to answer any questions if, if members have got them. Any questions, Mr. Fudd? Yes, Councillor Waters. Was there any thought given to any alternative uh, residential use for this, i.e., residential use for York residents? Um, I mean, this, this came about, um, my involvement in this came about as um, it was, it's the same sort of company and team and it will be the same occupants of the adjoining brickwork scheme. So that, that's how this has come around. So in terms of my involvement in it, it's been very much focused on linking into the existing student accommodation scheme. So through my involvement, there hasn't been, that's, that's not to say that, you know, they, they haven't looked at alternative residential options beforehand. I've got one question. You probably, oh, sorry, Councillor Carr. It's a bit of a mischievous comment, really, Chair, but I'm glad to see in 1.4 that this would otherwise be a car-free development. Mm. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, when we were on site, there were an awful lot of motor factor vans parked 
on the pavement all the way round, mm -hmm. which I was quite concerned about, actually. I don't know whether, whether, that's, whether you've noticed that as a problem, whether it is a problem, and whether if we are... I, well, not as part of this development, but if we, if I as a council suggested mm -hmm. WR lines on there, whether that would cause any problems it to you? It wouldn't cause us any problems whatsoever, Chair. No. Mm -hmm. no. But they were, they were everywhere. I couldn't believe how yeah, many they were. Yeah, I, I don't understand. As I understand it, they are looking at consolidating their operations, but, but, but what that means in terms of, as you say, all of the vans and everything else and yeah. how they operate, I don't know. Because as I understand it, this car parking will be sort of car car parking for right. certain uh, workers and staff oh, right. in operation so rather than vans but I, right. I don't know you know right. I don't think essentially the space will be there for them to do with as they yeah yeah but I mean I was concerned because currently there's probably not very many pedestrians but once you've got people yeah. living both in the flats that we've given permission and in here it's going to be a lot more <coughs> more foot, foot pedestrians walking around yes. there and they were all over the place Two okay five. pardon Two <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Councillor Richardson and Councillor Dagon. Thank you. Um, going back to the uh, accommodation, is this going to be a fact where it's, the units will be sold off to somebody, a private investor, who will then be expected to provide them for the students? Or is this going to be actually a student campus bit? properly run by some organisation that is, no, these are students. It's, it is going to be operated by the same people who, op, who operate the adjoining development, the Brickworks. So it will be IQ student accommodation will be taking on the operation and management of the scheme. But will, will they own? They won't, they won't own it. It's a, it's a, it will be a fund that so owns it. Private Yes. So in other words, it goes it. out and then they rent a map and it's yeah, all of it. Yeah, but IQ will have a, a long interest, as but they have with the brickwork. Uh, one of the new owners decided they wanted to live in there, would they be allowed? Or will it be purely students? The purely student, as, as, as it is at the moment. So yeah. residential will not be allowed? It's in the condition. So at the moment, it's, it's well, framed. I'm asking a yeah. question. Is that yeah, right? so it's framed at the moment. So it's, it's got to be for student accommodation and, and teed up that way. You don't know anything unless you ask the question. Um, I'm unfortunate that the drainage engineer has disappeared. Um, 3.2, it says uh, the risk management section. It refers to suds. Now, given everybody is trying to do their, their bit to save water and given the sizes of things, it, as it says, it doesn't seem to be uh, something that you've, you've considered or implemented or anything. Uh, Why? It's been, well, no, I, th I think, to be fair, it, it, it's been considered, but uh, to have, in terms, it depends what you call SUDS. Technically, SUDS is, is attenuating yeah. discharge. It's a tank in the floor that then you take which that is, water and, yeah. and use which, it for washing the car or whatever. Which we will, you know, there will, there will be attenuation tanks on here and everything else and it will be attenuated. I think in terms of softer suds, um, it's limited area of site. Whilst we've got quite, you know, a relatively expansive um, area of amenity space and landscape area, we want, the, the aim was to be able to provide as much of that for actual residence amenity, so actually usable space, ra rather than giving it over to softer suds and swales and things like that. So that, if, that's, that's what's driven the approach. Right, but if you've got tanks covered over, which is basically what they're doing, that, that's what it is, and then they use that water to supply the, the toilets, therefore you're saving on water and you use the rainwater and things. Yeah. That isn't going to impact, is it, on your garden? No, no, that wouldn't, no, no. But is that something that you are intending? Not at the moment, no. <laughs> Not to my knowledge, anyway, in terms of the, you know, the drainage design and everything else. OK, thank you. That's a de Gorn, and then... Yeah. And then... I'm not sure. I mean, it may be to the applicant or to officers mentioned about the parking and the tra travel. Um, on... Paragraph 4.27 here refers to the travel plan for the adjoining scheme, which we're demonstrating the majority of occupants, 90% are um, travelling by foot. And 
um, right from thinking that it's, it's intended that there be the same management for both sites. Would it be would it be possible for us to include because there doesn't seem to be a condition about a travel plan for a, for there to be a travel plan that covers both for for the travel <coughs> arrangements for this site to be incorporated within the travel plan for the existing site because assume that there was going to be some interchange between the two facilities. And the second point is, given that this application includes parking for eight vehicles, can we condition that whoever is benefiting from that parking has their own travel plan so that we can be reassured that it is actually being used to maximum efficiency in terms of parking available, given what has been said about the uh, situation we saw on the site visit with a lot of, of the company's vehicles being parked on the street, presumably because there's not enough space in the uh, existing <coughs> layout. So there's, there's two points. One is a travel plan for the, the occupants, and the second point is about a travel plan that relates to whoever is using that facility. We're still on questions to the applicant, so are you asking him first? <laughs> I'll pose that first to the yeah. applicant if he has, has any observations or views on that, and then I can come to the officers later. Yeah. Any views? I, don't, I don't think, well, we, we, we aren't in a position and through this, we, we won't be able to impose travel, uh, travel plan and restrictions on, on your motor factors. And, you know, as I said, to, to the best of my understanding, they, they are looking at consolidating, so actually reducing in scale their operations on here, and, and hence why there's actually a reduction in their car parking from right. what they've got at the moment from on the side right. of the eight spaces. Mm -hmm. So they, they would probably argue that in travel planning terms they're, they're doing their bit. Um, the intention generally is that, I mean, there's, there's regular surveys, so annual surveys in terms of the travel plan, which is where you've got these figures from, that that, that would be extended to include this anyway, um, whether we need a condition to um, formalise that. Um, but under IQ stewardship, they, they would, as a matter of course, extend it to include these additional bed spaces. Well, I've got, on that point, yeah, go on then quickly. Uh, I mean, the point, this is where there are always issues when you bring in accommodation into what is an industrial area. I know that area well. Those vans are actually vans that travel across the whole of the county, all over. They have to come at a certain point to transfer over their goods to then go off. If we start interfering with businesses, they'll be out of business. The electrical company where it says works will be out of business because they have vans down there. This is where and the glass people at the top will. So we need to be careful about this. Well, travel plan for them. Well, they were there first. He was just asking the question. Just I know, you but keep the, asking the question. Councillor something. Waters. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to ask this question in the full knowledge that either you or the officers might say it's covered by other legislation. But um, previously, with a lot of these student accommodation blocks, one particular problem that's occurred during construction and when they initially start up is the level of garish hideous advertising that goes up and then the council's usually in the position of trying to fight uphill to get it removed. Um, would you commit here publicly that you will engage in that um, because it's, well it's probably said in this agenda somewhere that um, there's such a desperate need for this accommodation that it'll all be full therefore you shouldn't really need to be competing with all this advertising. Yeah, I, I'm not in a position on behalf of IQ, they, IQ aren't my client, to confirm what they will or won't be doing. I think, I don't know, I'm not aware that there were any particularly bad issues with this original scheme in that sense, but I, again, I wasn't directly involved in it, but that's anecdotal. Um, so the answer to your question, I can't commit, no. Well, thanks for that. I'll throw that back to the officers then. Is there any form of condition that can be placed on this to prevent um, unauthorised advertising? It's been a particular issue with quite a number of these student accommodation blocks over many years.
if they want to put an advert on there, it will need consent. So it would need consent by, by virtue of what it is. So it'd be covered under enforcement if they put it up without. <laughs> That's right, just to add to that, if it's an unauthorised uh, advertisement, then it could be subject to enforcement action in the normal way, so the council does have control in that regard. The usual way that works then is um, the advert goes on, somebody then reports it, the enforcement action takes months, then precipitates into a planning application by which time the, the advert's still up there, it may then be refused, may then be appealed. Um, sounds very familiar with the, the Piccadilly issue, but um, you see how it works. I, I did that, that, it, that is the system and that is the, the law. That's why, I, that's why I tried to ask for a commitment from... I can't put a condition on... I know, but, you know, it's frustrating for all of us, you know. You could build a house if you wanted to without planning permission. The fact we might tell you to knock it down is... <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Sorry, somebody else... What? Kath, Kath, Kath yeah, You've been very quiet The today. point's <laughs> being covered. I was concerned we were trying to fix the drainage arrangements, but it's already covered in okay. condition. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Uh, Councillor Galvin. Chair, yeah, those that went on site yesterday, yeah, I think we're quite happy about this. It's not what you might, might call a beauty spot of York. Uh, and so I'm going to move the officer's recommendation, Chair. Um, when people talk about travel plans, it, as they say in West York, it's never to spit away from the college or university. <laughs> and I can't see anybody having cars and big vehicles travelling backwards and forwards because there's nowhere to park it when they get to the other end. Uh, so I have great pleasure in moving the officer's recommendation, Chair. Okay. Councillor Gorn, you have a question? Yes, it was a question that followed on from the question uh, to officers to respond to the, the point about the conditions. Can we add a condition about the travel plan being part of the, that for the wider site, so obviously be incorporated with it all? the operator, whether the operator is to have a travel plan. And secondly, um, can we condition that use of these parking spaces, which we are told is a requirement of the current site operator, can we, can we condition that either for sole use of the operator until <coughs> such time as we get uh, the, the planning authority agrees otherwise, um, because without that, um, they might well then decide that that's for residents or it could be rented out for anybody to use. Um, yeah, for the first, in terms of the travel plan for the actual operators, um, we tend to use the travel plans when we're trying to hit targets for certain modes of people using certain modes of travel. So it's, we can quite easily extend the travel plan to extend to this site. The reason why it wasn't proposed in the report is because we looked at the travel plan um, and all the students' comments and feedback from the existing accommodation, and they predominantly all walk. Um, so that, that in this location, these developments that are working without causing problems, that the amount of people that use cars is about 1%, so we didn't see it necessary to have a travel plan on this site as well when all the evidence suggests that we're hitting the targets in any event, so it wouldn't achieve that much, but we can do, there's no reason why we can't. Um, the other, in terms of uh, looking at the issue with the existing premises, it's not it, it's not really within the remit of this because it's not related to this development itself. It's it's an existing building somewhere else that. We're no, it's conditioning the parking spaces within this building. Oh right, sorry. To be for the use of the motor factors. Ah right. Rather okay. than if they moved on, yeah. they would then have to come and say we want to use it for X, Y, and Z. So just to clarify, just the clarification. Yes. The the site that is currently on there as. The white area, that is within the, the, the site of the application. Am I right in saying that? It's not excluded from the application, the parking area. Yes. It's in the red line. That's within the... Yes, yeah, yeah, it's okay. under the building. It's so on, the, on that the building, basis, that's sorry. what I'm saying. There yeah. should be a condition right. that says that it is only for 
the use of the, the current and let's have a wise agreed? Yes, unless otherwise agreed yeah. in writing. Yes. Yeah, we can put a condition along those lines. Okay. It's been moved by Councillor Galvin and seconded by Councillor Fenton. Um, that is, this is approved. We've got a request that officers can support that the parking spaces within the building are conditioned. Um, everybody happy to add that? Yeah. And we've got a, a request that the travel plan for the adjoining uh, student accommodation is extended to allow to, to bring this one in as one of say. Happy with that? I yeah. Am yeah. Okay. No. Right. So with those two additional conditions, yes. And yeah, the, the, the change to the landscaping edition for in perpetuity. So, um, with those conditions, can we to go to the vote? All those in favour, please show. Yeah, okay. Those against? Abstentions? When we can change a major legislation, we would. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Let's. Thank you very much, Mr. Fred. You need to go out of this door. If you go out that way, you will never see you again. <laughs> um, 4C, page 77, which is the erection of a hall. Oh, it's called Council Paul. Right, page 77, erection of a horse walker. Um, an officer update? No officer update. No officer update. There's no officer update. I'll quickly just explain the, well, just show you the plans. The red, red circle that you can see shows where about the horse walker is going to go. This is looking down on the horse walker as it is. And that's what it'll look like. That's your update. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you have a question, Councillor Waters? I was just going to move officers' recommendation. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. There's no landscaping. There's no landscaping on this one, so we're all right. <laughs> Second it. Any questions, comments? Ready to vote? All those in favour, please show. Any against? I think that's approved. Oh, sorry. Did you want? To? But in future, oh, we, we won't have to bring these, will we? In future, because of the changes we made at council last week, small applications like this in the green belt will no need will, will be officer approved unless. Right, it's all right. Right. I, I, I wouldn't wish to be thought disrespectful, but we've just dealt with two applications in half an hour yeah. which we, which has required a two hour wait yeah. we could have had people waiting for both of those yeah. I wonder if we could give consideration yeah, to sorry do you want me to close it I'll explain I've no urgent business meetings therefore closed <laughs>